this guy was by far the closest to actually beating Shavkat Rakhnov. Going into this fight, he was seven fights undefeated. In the first round, we did see something Shavkat does in a lot of his fights where he likes to snap out that jab with a wide stance and throw loads of feints because usually when your opponent throws feints and you're on the back foot, it scares you from coming into range because you think if you try and step him with like a hook, he's going to beat you to the hook by snapping that jab out on you. Or he might use that to set up another shot. So he might throw a jab, but not actually land it on you and then come up with an overhand. You see a lot of fighters use feints to land on their opponent. So his opponent wasn't resorting to throwing like any punches to the head. So he just tried to like throw some kicks to the body, some kicks to the legs to make sure that Shavkat can't actually close the distance and try and set up that feint and land on him. And then eventually in the fight, Shavka actually finally commits to using that jab instead of using it as a feint. So his opponent knows every time Shavkat's gonna throw that jab, he's gonna come forward. So as Shavkat comes forward, his opponent blocks the jab of Shavkat, and because he's gonna step in after throwing the jab, he throws a left hook because he knows in close range, you don't wanna follow it with like a cross. If you're very close in the pocket, you wanna throw like, hooks and uppercuts because they do the most damage and his temples open in the pocket also and as he gets hit he does what a lot of boxers do when they eat a big shot in the pocket they usually want to clinch on they don't want to just stand there and just eat another strike so Shavkat does a good job of trying to get like a body lock in him so as his opponent goes to throw the follow-up shot after throwing the hook he actually misses him and catches him around the head so it doesn't actually damage him. Some people might say Shavkat got lucky at this point, but in my opinion, he did show some good counter striking as well as offensive pressure striking during this fight. So like I was saying about using feints to set up strikes, that's what his opponent did here by trying to throw a jab and then following up with a hook. But immediately, as Shavkat sees that his opponent goes to throw the jab, if you look at his footwork, he steps back. So as soon as he stepped back, his opponent tries to throw the hook He's going to have more time to block it because he stepped back. So his opponent does try to throw a hook and it just misses. And Shavkat does something which I'm surprised about. He drops his hand down as well. So say he didn't do that step back and he just stayed there in the pocket and tried to put his hand down. He probably would have got caught. But because he had good footwork and was able to like shift his legs back, it stopped his opponent catching him with that right hook. And throwing a rear hook is more telegraph compared to like throwing like your lead hand's hook. So it made it even easier for him to defend against it. And as Shavkat goes to the step back again, he tries to come in with like some hook. But because he's on the back foot and he's not really looking at the target when he throws the punch, he doesn't land clean. It looks like a Nate Diaz stopped and slap. So as he connects on his opponent, the right side of Shavkat's head is not being defended because he's gone to throw the hook and he hasn't got the um, telephone hand block. So his opponent then goes to throw a rear left hook and even though it's telegraphed, Shavkat's not going to have enough time to defend it because he's already thrown his hook. So he catches Shavkat right on the chin and some of you might think because of the camera angle you can't really tell if it hits him. But what I'll say about that is you can usually look at a fighter's body language after they've been hit and you can tell. Like Paddy Pimblett against Jared Gordon. I knew there was times in that fight where he got hit but the camera angles looked like he didn't. But you could tell by him backing up and his mouth opened wide a little bit. And Shavkat did the same thing here. And I know that's not concrete evidence for it actually hitting him. But I think it's a theory. I think it just touched him but it didn't do too much damage to him. And another reason why I think it actually caught him. Because as soon as he got caught with that left hook. It enabled his opponent to come forward with a right cross and actually catch him on the chin. So he like caught him with the left hook and then immediately goes for the cross. So because his opponent is throwing the cross, again, he's left the hook wide open because he's caught him on the chin. He's got no block or defense right now. So Shavka actually catches him with like a short left hook where it mixes a bit of the forearm in it. So as well, it's like hitting his chin with his bone and part of his knuckle. And I believe this shot kind of stumbles him a little bit. And the fact that his footwork's all over the place, he actually loses his balance and almost gets knocked down to the ground, but he's able to stay up to his feet. And at the end of the first round, Shavkat does show good takedown defense because you see his opponent tries to get a single leg. He does a good job of keeping his balance by putting his left hand on the floor to prevent him from just like sweeping his other leg and just taking him down to the ground. His opponent even tries to go for a high crotch takedown like his Daniel Cormier and try and slam him to the ground. But for some reason, Shavkat is still able to defend against it. And at this point, his opponent is just exerting so much energy because he even goes to try and like suplex him, it looks like. But he can't do it 
and then you wouldn't believe it, but Shavkat uses a knee and then does some like inside trip like he's Leon Edwards against Usman and then takes him down to the ground. His opponent starts to come out this round a bit faster by doing like a step in left body kick, which forces Shavkat to like circle round, but because his footwork wasn't in a good position in this spot, he actually crosses his feet, which makes it easier for his opponent to shoot for a single leg. But he actually sweeps him down to the ground, so he sweeps two legs with one hand because Shavkat was circling around. And Shavkat did do a good job of defending against it by keeping that hand on the ground. But as soon as he lost that grip of the hand off the ground, it enabled his opponent to actually like power slam him down to the ground. So on the ground, this is what I mean by Shavkat is so offensive off his back. He's able to lock up like a Kimura, bridge his hips, roll him over and then lock in a tight Kimura, which looks like he's going to break his arm. But the reason I don't think he actually got this submission off is because if you look at his knees, they're on the ground, but he's not postured up. Like you think about that Islam Makashev submission against Dan Hooker and he had one leg around the top of his head so that he could like fully extend the arm and force him to tap because the arm was like bent backwards. But because he didn't have much control over his opponent, he was able to sit up and then roll Shavkat over, landing in full guard, which he would just push him off. And during the build up to the point where he almost got knocked out, you see Shavkat is actually standing in the pocket instead of standing at range, fainting that jab out like he's going to throw another shot. Instead, he wants to strike here. So he then goes to throw one, two. The jab actually does connect on his opponent's chin, but as he goes to throw the cross, the uppercut beats the cross. He then hits him in the body that forces Shavkat to move back. And then that opens the cross to the temple, which almost knocks Shavkat down to the ground. You see him kind of stumble and that's because it hit him near the temple area and that's the shot where you want to hit a lot of opponents with because usually it like messes up with your brain. So it seemed like Shavkat wasn't actually thinking at this point because you can see in the pocket right here, he was starting to get hit. He missed a few shots going into like the clinch but he actually did catch him with like a short right hook to Shavkat's chin. That was causing him to back up. So at this point, Shavkat is still fighting in the pocket. I don't think he's head was in the right space during this point. So his opponent throws like a lead calf kick, stomps his feet down to the ground and catches him with a massive overhand, which caused Shavkat a bit of discomfort because you can see him like shift his body to the side. And then he comes up with some like follow up hook that sits him down to the ground. And I was very surprised about what Shavkat did because as soon as he plants that foot down to the ground, he goes to throw a jab instead of like trying to throw a cross as he puts his foot down because when someone throws a kick to you usually their hands are down and his opponent's hands were down during this point as he landed the kick so a lot of fighters would usually try and throw an overhand as they try and throw the kick or maybe a cross but for some reason Shavka actually went to throw a jab to his opponent which misses making it even harder to block it because you've now thrown your jab and his opponent's already loading up that right overhand. So if you immediately miss that jab, you're going to get caught with that right overhand and that's what happened. And I'll give Shavkat credit here because a lot of fighters would have got finished at this point. So his opponent is just landing bombs from the top mount position. But Shavkat did do a good job of putting his arm up and shrimping his hip side to side to like stop the momentum of his shots doing a lot of damage to his head. So he was able to survive the round, but you could tell he was in a lot of pain because he was still on the ground even after the round ended. And that reminds me of Brian Ortega against Alex Volkanovski when after the round he was getting ground and pounded from stack guard and he almost got finished and he was still lying down on the ground after the round ended, but eventually he did make it to his stool. And in the third round, you could start to see Shavkat was coming back. You could see his opponent was tired, he was breathing through the mouth, he was running away. And then you see Shavkat turn into Jorge Masvidal and throw like a jumping switch knee. But it weren't just like your average flying knee, it was like a switch knee. That like, imagine if that landed, that probably would have knocked him out. Because that's smart, that's what I mean, he's got a very good IQ when it comes to fighting like this. And then he like falls on top of his opponent's head and almost crushes him. And then we see Shavkat do what he did in like round one, where his opponent goes to throw a heavy shot, but he clinches onto him like a lot of these boxers do. Goes to step his foot in front of him, but his opponent does a good job of like defending against it. So it looks like he's trying to set up a judo throw, but instead... He kicks his opponent's right leg up off the ground and suplexes him onto his arm. And I think this is very significant because at this point he's tired and when you slam people it takes the gas out of you. Plus he's landing on his arm, all that body weight, 170 pounds, crushing down onto his arm and maybe more depending about his walking weight. And Shavkat was able to get into top man and start landing strikes from there. But as soon as his opponent broke the grip, 
Shaft Cat like forces his mouth guard to like eject from his opponent's mouth and he starts to defend with his right arm, not his left arm. Remember what I said about he's crushed his left arm with impact on the way down. So he's only defending with his right hand because it's injured. And then Shaft Cat won by ground and pound finish. Yeah, so I thought I'd say that. And he hasn't got an opponent. So I hope he fights someone like Hamzat Shamal soon, both undefeated. But I don't know what's going to happen because Jeff Neal just pulled out of an injury. And I've got no idea what they're going to do with Shavkat because it seems like a lot of people are scared to fight him. Brian Barberina wants to fight him, but the UFC don't want him to fight Brian Barberina. So I don't know what they're going to do next. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Talk to you soon.